E.G. Nightum has written and illustrated books for all ages. She also makes relief block prints and writes short stories and poems celebrating the wonders of the world, both real and imaginary. She lives near Boston with the usual sort of family and pets, including a pampered Venus flytrap. And whenever you're ready. Thank you. And now for something completely different. Uh, this is going to be a very different kind of story. Love Potion. Ziblick's Cosmic Emporium stood for as long as anyone could remember at the corner of Elm Street and Hillside. The proprietor was an old one, made of tentacles and slime, who bubbled cheerfully at all his customers and loved nothing better than a good gossip when anyone came in to buy a box of interdimensional nails or a packet of Eldritch biscuits. Abby Dimmick took this into consideration when deciding the best time to purchase a love potion. She knew Ziblick would chat if she came when the Emporium was empty, and she was in no mood to chat with anyone about the sorry state of her love life. On the other hand, this still seemed preferable to asking for a love potion in front of half her fellow townsfolk on a busy Saturday afternoon. She winced as the cracked iron bell in the doorway clanged, announcing her entrance. So much for subtlety. At least the sparkling and warbling of the ineffable feather squids in the corner always made her smile. Ah, dear Lady Dimmick, Ziblick greeted her brightly from the high counter of polished mahogany in front of the shelves of dusty bottles, lead-sealed urns, and other dark and mysterious items. The air sac inside his semi-transparent greenish body swelled and pulsed as he spoke amplifying his voice to a tone suitable for dark proclamations. What service may be rendered unto you on this fateful day? I'm looking for a love potion, please, she mumbled. What's that? A potion of inexorable love? The old one bellowed, making Abby profoundly grateful that she was indeed the only customer in the shop at the moment. Surely you need not such uncanny power to sway the heart of man. Abby thought wistfully of Charlie Godwin, the new math teacher at the high school, who seemed so sane and sweet and funny and so very diffident. The chances that he would approach her or that she could engineer a better acquaintanceship with him seemed dismal. These dispiriting reflections made her a little blunter than usual. Listen, Ziblick, I'm 42 years old. It's been years since my last real date. I don't like bars or the men who hang out in them. And the thought of being swiped over endlessly by potential internet stalkers does not appeal. So now I've finally met a man I like, and I do not want to waste this opportunity. So I would like a love potion, if you please. The old one oozed forward confidentially and lowered his booming voice to a fainter rumble. Pray tell what man is this of whom you speak. I'm not sure that's any of your business, Abby returned tartly. Everyone knows you're the world's worst gossip. A fountain of bubbles rippled up inside Ziblick. Verily you speak sooth, Lady Dimmick, he chuckled, guilty as charged. Yet I have known you many years, and my only desire is to witness your happiness for such brief span as your mortal life may encompass. A sympathetic tentacle writhed toward Abby, and the deep voice grew more plangent. For many long millennia have I observed the love affairs of mortals, and I judge not that this unnatural elixir will bring you true happiness. Abby scowled. I thought you were a salesman, not a life coach. Please just sell me the love potion. A disapproving gurgle shook Ziblick's gelatinous slime. I should be loath to see you destroy your peace with such a baleful brew. Consider well whether you could truly be content, ever fearing that the love you were given was yours only by compulsion. Surely true happiness can come only with the love of free hearts, freely bestowed. So why do you even sell love potions if you think they're so baleful? 
Alas, even such as I are not mighty enough to withstand the insidious force of expectation. Who would respect a cosmic emporium that trafficked not in arcane tinctures, cryptic tomes, dark talismans, and otherworldly relics? He waved a dripping tentacle at the rows of shelving around him. Marketing, dear lady, marketing. But I repeat that surely you need not such uncanny power to sway the heart of man. Abby sighed. All right, Mr. Dark Lord of all advice. What do you think I should do instead? Because I want to get this right for once. A phosphorescent glimmer twinkled across the expanse that would be Ziblick's face if old ones made of tentacles and slime had faces. Disclose unto me, dear Lady Dimmock, what it is of all that may be found in this whole wondrous cosmic emporium that would make your heart truly gladdest. Oh, so now you're a salesman, 